Coming in hot from Arizona, this is Trevor and Troy Howard, and you're on So Tell Us Time. You can have everything you want in your business. Sometimes you just need a little help. Every business owner would love to charge more for their services, but sometimes you can sacrifice long-term loyalty for a short-term profit. Creating the right rituals is key to your business having success. Are you tired of competing with your competitors? Guess what? You don't have to compete if you create. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of So Tell Us Time, where we help you focus in on your business. Think of it from a different perspective. Take it, pull it apart, analyze it, put it back together better than it was before. Not like when you do like an Ikea activity, <laughs> you put like some furniture together from Ikea and yeah. you get done and there's like all these extra screws and pieces, and you're like, where does any of this go? No, not like that. We put it back together whole. Yep. We are not the Ikea of podcasts. <laughs> There's a lot of them out there, though. Don't listen to them. Today, we're going to be talking about how to deal with angry customers. So every day, or I should say not every day, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> well, on, <laughs> on a on a you know semi regular basis in business, you may from time to time, I guess, maybe just from time to time, you may deal with angry customers. And if you haven't dealt with angry customers, you probably just haven't been in business long enough. Yep. Because if you've been in business long enough, you are going to deal with angry customers. You cannot please everyone all the time, even if your service or product is phenomenal. Yep. It, guess what? People are just, some people are just cranky. <laughs> I've got a name for them. We call them Yelpers. <laughs> we call them Yelpers because you know what they do? They go on Yelp and they just complain and write negative reviews about everybody on True. Yelp. They're freaking Yelpers. Friggin' Yelp. All right. Well, today we're going to be talking about how to diffuse different ways we can diffuse that angry customer and hopefully turn them into a positive customer. Now, here's the thing is, all the time, obviously, you know, we're in the review industry. We're in the review world, reputation world, right? And guess what? If you go to Google and you look at Sotellus, we don't have a 5.0. What? No, no, we don't have a 5.0. No. Dang it. I think we have like a 4.9. We do, yeah. It's a 4.9. <laughs> 4.9, baby. And let me tell you something. That is actually better than a 5.0. Yep. People do not believe, statistics show, people do not believe a 5.0. If you have zero negative reviews, people don't believe it. They think that your reviews are fake. They think you paid people or whatever. You wrote fake reviews. So it's actually better to have anywhere between a 4.2 to a 4.9 than it is to have a 5.0. And so I tell people all the time, I tell my customers all the time, it's okay to have a negative review. It's okay to have an upset customer. People know we're all human and yep. they give grace if you deal with that customer in the right way. So it's all about the response when it comes to reviews. They want to, what, what most people do, 99% of people will go and look at the reviews, they'll see the positive ones, and then they'll go look to see do they have a three, two, or one? And then they want to read that. And then they want to see, well, how did the business respond to it? Yeah. So just so all of you know, I was talking to a customer the other day and he was like, I've got a 4.9. I lost my beautiful 5.0. And I was like, dude, you're now more believable. You will close more business. <laughs> and he was like, really? And I showed him the statistics and he was like, that's awesome. He was actually excited. He goes, dude, you just like brightened up my day. You took my negative day and you turned it into a positive one because now I know I'm actually going to close more business because I got a negative customer that I was able to then write out, you know, what happened, dealt with it in a good way and people will read that and be happy. So, yep. But that's just one example. That's not the examples that we're going to be talking about nope. here. No, nope, I just went on our, off on a rant as I usually do. <laughs> that was a good one though. Go ahead, Troy. <laughs> All right. So today we're going to be talking about steps to dealing with an angry customer. Like how do you diffuse a situation and how do you turn that situation around and like diffuse it literally like diffuse it like a bomb, right? You need to approach an angry customer kind of like a bomb. You got to be careful. You know, you got to be meticulous. You got to be detailed. You got to cut the red wire. Only. Only. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully that's the right one. 
don't take um, that. That is not bomb advice. Yeah. If you ever have a bomb strapped to you, do not cut the red wire. Yeah, we yeah, exactly. <laughs> Our lawyers told us to say that we Disclaimer. do not give bomb disarming advice, and <laughs> yeah. no one should take the, any advice we give on here. Is Disclaimer. <laughs> You all caught that, right? Right, exactly. Okay, so first thing you want to do when you get an angry customer, because we're all going to get them, right? Whether you've done something right or whether you've done something wrong, you're going to get that angry customer. The first thing you need to do is remain calm. Yeah. And this is where most people mess up right off the Don't bat. Don't blow up. Yeah, do not blow up. In tense situations, if you escalate and you act emotionally, what is your customer going to do? They're going to escalate. They're going to raise their intensity above you. And then you get more mad, and then they get more totally. mad. And next thing you know, it is just out of control. And right? let me see, let me tell you something. A scorned customer is not a person you want to deal with. No. Like they are going to go everywhere and write and tell the experience everywhere. Yeah. To burn, they will try to burn you to the ground. They will. They will try to burn you to the ground, even posting on their own personal Facebook pages and social media sites. Exactly. Just to burn you to the ground. Yeah. So the key is remain calm. One way to do that that I found that kind of helps out when dealing with angry customers is... Drink a beer? No. No, <laughs> don't do that. Oh, okay, don't do that. Yeah, definitely don't crack open a beer right <laughs> in front true. of them. Yeah, that's true. Don't do it. No. What you want to do is you want to give them the ability to get everything out. Because a lot of times they start to say something and then we try to, you know, like, oh, I'm going to rebut that, what they said. I'm going to say this. And then they just get more and more mad and they're talking, you're talking over them, they're talking over you. So what I found to be very effective is literally say nothing. Mm -hmm. Just let them run through it. Let them get everything out and just sit there quietly. Yeah. And wait. And then once, it's kind of like a train when they run out of steam and they just start slowing down. And then you just wait. And then eventually, I've even waited where like I've said nothing after they've stopped talking. Oh, yeah. I I, I was blown away because Troy is not a confrontational person. It nope. is hilarious. Like if there needs to be a pit bull, if somebody needs a talking to, <laughs> right? If, or like I like to say, if somebody needs a spanking, Trevor's going to do it. That's I'm right. going to give him the spanking. Troy does not do that. But one time this lady was just, I could hear her through the phone. Troy is over there and I could hear her. And Troy just sat there and he sat there and he sat there. And then she stopped. And then he's like, are you done? And she and, literally asked me, she's like, are you still there? Yeah. And he's like, <laughs> and he's like, like, I'm here. Are you done? I want to make sure you get everything out that you want. And then she actually went. <laughs> again, you know, like the little like, like the little lawyer disclaimer, like I yes. did earlier. And she just keeps going. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And then she stops and Troy sits there silent. And she's like, are you there? And he's like, yes, I want to make sure that you are able to tell me everything you're unsatisfied with. So please, if there's anything more, let me know. And then a third time. <laughs> and so she goes through and then Troy sits there and he waits and she's like, are you still there? And he's like, yes. And I just want to make sure, have you been able to say everything that you want to say? I want you to feel like I have heard you because I'm listening. And she was like, you know what? I have. And like her demeanor Came yeah. way down. Yeah, she ran out of steam. It was amazing. And yeah. I was like, gee. And that leads us into step two, which is practice active listening. Yes. So one of the problems that most of us get into, and, and you can think about this in, you know, with an angry customer, but you can also think about this with a spouse mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. you know, some of the- An employee. You know, an employee. Yeah. A lot of times, the minute they start complaining, we're not even listening anymore. We're actually thinking about what we're going to say. The rebuttal as soon as they're done talking, That's right? That's right? right? So we know we don't actually hear what they say. Mm -hmm. We And maybe the first thing, we're, we're already thinking about our rebuttal from the first thing they said, but the first thing isn't really that important. It was the third or fourth thing that they said that really is the issue, yeah. but we're gonna, re, you know, we're gonna rebut the first thing they said. <laughs> and then they're like, you're not even listening, <laughs> yeah. right? And it just gets worse. So practice active listening. I feel like you were fly on the wall at my house. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. So don't focus on your response. Just listen, right? Yeah. Make sure you get and let them get everything out. Totally. You know, um, then the next thing you want to do is you want to repeat what they said to you so that they know that you were actually listening. So a perfect example of that, if they're complaining, you know, blah, 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 this, that, the other. And, and you guys did this and you missed this deadline, blah, blah, blah. You know, the way I would respond is, so what I'm hearing you say oh is... God. You're upset that this didn't get done by on the time frame that you wanted it to be done. Is that and then I say, 
is that correct? Mm-hmm. Right? So now they know that I listened to what they said. And then I ask, is that correct? Because I want them to say yes and, and acknowledge that that is what the issue was mm-hmm. and that I understand it completely. Because sometimes you'll get those people that they will complain and they'll say, well, this is the problem. Mm-hmm. And then you fix that problem. And then they'll go, but this is the problem over here. And you're like, okay, well, I can fix that problem. That's not really a problem. Here's this. Well, yeah, but really what the problem is, like, right? And they just keep switching because they just want <laughs> to be angry. Angry. Right. They just want to be angry. <laughs> and right. So if you get them, if you repeat back to them and you get them to say, yes, that's correct. Mm-hmm. That's what the issue is. Now it's hard for them to be like, well, no, it's really this, right? Yeah. You didn't understand what I said. Absolutely. Okay. So the next thing is thank them for bringing the issue to your attention. Mm, thank you so much. And this is a hard I love one. being told how much I suck. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really hard one, but there's a psychology behind this. Yeah. Right? The psychology behind this is that when you thank someone, first off, it's a great way to start calming them down. Mm-hmm. Right? So you're not arguing with them. You're thanking them. Thank you so much for bringing this to my attention. I am so sorry, right? And the other thing about it, the psychology behind it is think about it. When someone says thank you to you, what is your natural response? Oh, well, you're welcome. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Right? So it changes their mindset. It kind of changes their mindset of like out of like I'm yelling, I'm mad, I'm this. And now they've got to like be like, you're welcome. You know, and you'll actually see a lot of times a a quick change in their attitude when you do that. And a lot of times, too, it shocks them. They're like, wait, what? It's a total de-escalator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a great way. So make sure you're thanking them um, for bringing it to your attention. And then, of course, you know, say you're you're sorry. Right. I completely uh, one of the things that I've done several times, I completely understand where you're coming from. I understand that would be very frustrating. I see what you're saying and from how you're seeing it, how you experienced that, that would be frustrating. Exactly. Because I'm teeing it up to tell them. Yes. You know, you know and you can say, I'm, you know, another thing, like if you want to use the words, I'm sorry, I love the way you worded it, Trevor. Another way, if you're going to actually say the words, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. right? A good way to do that is I'm, I'm so sorry that you feel that way, mm-hmm. right? Or that's what you experience. Exactly. Or that's what you experience. Yeah. That's a great way to put it too, right? So make sure that they feel that. Um, and then the very next thing is you want to explain the steps that you're going to take to solve the problem. Yeah, because like when I would say, when I've done this before, it's like, I am so sorry that that's what you experienced. Because here is what we strive to give our clients. And then I explain. And then they a lot of times are like, yeah, I would love that. That's what I want. And I'm like, and that is what we strive every day for. That is what Isaac, your success coach, or that is what Ryan, or that is what Nick, you know, and I go through. And it's funny because I've actually had it to be where when I start bringing in the people they're working with and I'm like, I am sorry that they didn't give you that experience, that they didn't do what we, this is what our company is stands for. And, da, da, da. and when I start to kind of get on my guys that they're working with, I can't tell you how many times they've been like, well, I mean, no, he, you know, he, they start defending them. Exactly. They start defending them <laughs> because, you know, things are never as bad as, as people really think they are. Yeah. Right? That's another thing to understand. I just want, I'll throw that in and that's not in. I don't think. No, no, thing, that's, like, that's exactly part of this because explaining them the steps is also a way for you to show them like, this is what should have happened. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of times they will go, well, well, no, that did happen. Yes. Oh, it did. Yeah. Like, you know, like, oh, yeah, we put this in place and we do this. And oh, yeah, your success coach, you know, right mm-hmm. off the bat, he's going to call you. He's going to email yep. you. He's going to follow I'm up. I'm so with sorry you. he didn't do that. Well, well, he did, you know, and I'm like, but I've even and, and here's the thing is tracking and knowing everything is really key. Yes. Because I will go and prior to calling someone, see, I take a beat. When some when my yes. guys come in and like this person's ticked, you know, I take a beat, and then I go and I research everything. I look through all of our call recordings. Mm-hmm. I look through our email transactions with them. I look through any chats we have with them. I look through their account. I look through everything, and then I'm like, I'm so sorry that Isaac failed you like that. Because what's weird to me is what I'm seeing here is is that on the fifth, 
Isaac spoke to you and this was what your conversation was about because our guys are trained to yeah. put in notes. And it's like, they're like, well, he did. And then I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Well, that that's good. I'm glad because I was really going to get after Isaac. So, and then <laughs> I see that on the 10th, he sent you this email and then you replied to it and, and that thing. Well, yeah, he did. Oh, okay, good. Phew. Cause if he didn't, I mean, he's, his job's on the line here. And then I see on the 15th, he called you, you know, and all of a sudden they start backpedaling. Yep. They, 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 they de-escalates the situation and then they backpedal a little bit because they're like, oh crap. Like, you know, I came in hot because a lot of times people are coming in hot for the stupidest little things. Yep. And I'm not going to jump ahead. I, I'm going to let you keep going. But yeah. No, no, you're right. You're absolutely good. So that's the thing. And again, maybe there is a problem. Maybe right. you really did mess up, sure. right? So if you if you really did mess up, then you need to give them steps of, look, here's the steps we're going to go through to solve this problem for you. And freaking own it. I, that's my thing is, if it's on you, if it's on us, I will own it. Yep. And if that means I have to give the customer their money back or something like that, then I'm going to own that. Yep. But if that customer is wrong, then I'm going to own them. Right. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. because I, because I'm going to, but I'm going to have the things in place, like what I was just talking about. Yeah. But you, you have to be willing to own it when you're wrong. Because if you want your customer to admit that they were wrong, which is like the hardest thing in the world to make someone do. Yeah. You got to be willing to do it too. Exactly. And that's just my own opinion. Absolutely. And so again, like, like I said, one of the best things you do is you acknowledge the problem. Mm -hmm. Look, we messed up here. We, you know, this is what should have happened, but obviously it didn't. Mm -hmm. So now here's what we're going to do going forward to make sure this never happens again for you and to make this right, you right. know? So um, that's really important. The other thing you want to do is set a time to follow up with them if needed. Mm -hmm. So that's a really important thing because a lot of times if you set a follow up with them, then they go, okay, you're taking this serious because you're going to reach back out to me. And you're gonna you're holding yourself accountable, right? And a lot of times that that really makes people happy. And then a big one is be sincere. Yeah, totally. That's really important because it's more than just what you say. Um, it's the tone of your voice. Absolutely. It's the expression on your face. It's your body language. Um, I tell my people they can if you're smiling, they can hear it. If you are rolling your eyes, they can hear it. Yes. You know, and if you think you're muting your phone and saying something bad about them, guess what? Sometime they're going to hear it. You're going <laughs> to, your mute button ain't going to work or you're going to forget or you're going to think it muted and then you're going to say something and they're going to catch you. Yeah. So, and and along with that, intentions I would- Intentions matter. Yeah, absolutely. And along with that, I would actually say too, a lot of times you might get an angry, an email from an angry customer. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's so much better just to pick up the phone oh and to call them oh my gosh. versus respond back with an email. Yeah. And I won't, I, I don't, I hate that. You call, you send me an angry email and if I can, I'm going to pick up the phone and call you. Yep. That's what I'm going to try first. I'm going to try to first call you because it is, I can't tell you how many all caps emails <laughs> I've gotten in 21 years that I pick up the phone and they're like, Oh, Oh, hey Trevor <laughs> like it's so hey how are you man how you doing buddy you know and it's such a different tone yes and they'll even be like sorry I all caps that uh but I'm a little frustrated you know so yeah and, and the other thing too is like again with email things can get misunderstood totally so if they come at you strong and you respond back you may not mean anything bad when you respond back but because they're already defensive yeah and angry, they might read into, you know, read into it that you're angry and that you're saying things and they may misunderstand what you're saying. So totally. a phone call is a great way to take care of those angry customers. Um, and then the final thing is really highlight the priority of fixing the problem for them. Yeah. You know, let them know that like, hey, this is really important to us. Yeah. We want to get this fixed right away for you totally. because if you can show them that this is a priority that you're going to jump on this that you're going to take care of this right away that de-escalates a ton yeah uh, for them so those are kind of eight steps that you can use yep. to to uh, take care of that angry customer anything else trevor you want to add? well you know this episode is brought to you by our parents paid for counseling marriage counseling <laughs> years ago <laughs> did you do that by the way because this is like nailing every single thing no no <laughs> dude okay so troy missed out apparently i, but, I but he did wrote this up. <laughs> so i remember my parents years back i swear I, are you sure you didn't get this as a gift they bought us this group counseling marriage counseling that they went through 
because they had heard about it from a friend and the friend said it was so amazing. And my parents have an amazing marriage, but they, they, they said, hey, things can always be better. And it wasn't like a one on one counseling session. It was this group thing. So there was no like he says and she said and he did. And like, no, it's like you're in a room with other people. So I never did. So that. Mo- you didn't do it. So <laughs> no. mom and dad, they bought it. They Well, they offered it then because they bought it for Chelsea and I. Shanna and Joseph, Lori and Justin, and I know they offered it to you guys, but it was, you know what the funny thing is? It's literally all of this, and it was so hard <laughs> to like sit, and it was like, we had to do this thing like where they would send us, so we'd go there, they would talk about the principles, and then they'd send you home to actually implement them with your spouse. Okay. So there was no complaint, no one ever, yeah. like there was no complaining of anyone, and no one in a group setting wants to complain anyways. And so it was funny because it was literally this, like, active listening like <laughs> the person gets to so i had to sit there and chelsea would like say things that are bothering her and then i'd have to be like mm-hmm, and i couldn't say a freaking word oh, you know yeah. and of course you want to just be like pew, 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 <laughs> fire back like you know and so you shut your mouth and you listen and then you say okay and do you feel like there's anything else you needed to say or do you feel like you've pretty well explained it yes i do okay so what i'm hearing that you said like this is what i heard you say <laughs> <laughs> this is the problem and you'd have to and then you know and they would have to and it oh my gosh it was literally this freaking thing to the t so this is not just in business people <laughs> this is in marriage and i will tell you though it did improve mine and chelsea's marriage a, a ton just because of communication like we were already communicators we just didn't know how to communicate yeah usually it was in like yelling right it was like very loud voices you would have thought we were new yorkers <laughs> all my new yorkers who are listening right or my jersey people what <laughs> um, but no, that's hilarious. You didn't do that? No. All right, well, there you go. You should be a freaking there group you, counselor. I was going to say, there you go. Trevor and I normally charge $1,000 an hour <laughs> yeah. for uh, relationship yeah. counseling. Yep. But you guys get it for free today. All free. <laughs> there you go, peoples. All right, well, I don't know about you, but I feel good. I feel de-escalated right now. Me too. I feel calm. I feel heard. I feel understood. And I feel go. like that, that, you know, things are going to be, they're, they're going to happen to resolve my issues. Excellent. Oh, good job, Troy. This is wonderful. All right. So what's the homework? Homework for today. Train your team on this, this week, how to deal with an angry customer, how to de-escalate that. So they don't always have to be, it's great if you can train your staff to do this because then they don't always have to be bringing it to you. Right. And you have to be the one taking all the muck, right? Yep. So this week, figure out those steps that you want to implement in your business in order to, what, like whatever those are, because I think every business is going to be a little bit different. What is your protocol? Yep. We have our protocol of researching before we respond. We want to get in there. We want to make sure. And then- and then don't be afraid to eat crow. Yep. If you messed up, own it. Absolutely. Customers will appreciate that. Yeah. That's it. That's it. All right, guys. We love you. We appreciate you. And we hope that you are having a good time with us because we know we have a great time <laughs> with you guys. I mean, I don't do this. I mean, I kind of do it just to hear my own voice because I really like my own voice. But <laughs> I don't do it to hear your voice. Yeah, I tried. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> so old. I'm like, Troy, so did you like that last episode? Did you listen to it? And he's like, I haven't listened to one in a single episode. I'm like, rude. <laughs> I listen to it just for quality control, okay? No. I, I don't want to pad our YouTube stats. <laughs> That's so true, actually. <laughs> I'm like, 50,000 of them are me. <laughs> replay, 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 replay. Uh, all right, guys. We'll share, like, comment. Let us know what you want to hear about. And we absolutely love you. We will see you guys next week on the next episode of So Tell Us Time. Oh.